What is up, fam? HNO here with another comment of the week. And actually was going to upload the comment of the week on Friday, but I saw this comment in an article on Sunday and I read it and I and I just had to do the comment of the week today. So, you know, so here it is. You know, I'm sure all of you have heard about the tragic event at the church and you know the nine people shot dead by us by a white supremacist um so you know just to give a little background the guy's name is dylan roof uh and for a while people in the media weren't really sure whether this was racially motivated i don't see how they couldn't know or why they had to pussyfoot around the fact that it was and it was pretty blatantly obvious but new evidence was discovered and there was a racist manifesto that he had written w well before he had committed to this shooting. And in the article, he talks about how he became racially aware uh, after he had heard about the events of the Trayvon Martin shooting. And basically in the manifesto, it pretty much goes downhill from there because he he goes in to talk about how blacks are lazy and stupid and you know they're able to get away with being stupid and acting up in public because white people just expect that shit of them um or of us i should say and, you know just a whole lot of white supremacist stereotypical rhetoric that that's what you know mainly what i got from it so I'm not even going to go into it. I'll post a link to the web page in the description. And if you want to, you can read it um, just so you can get an idea of, of the nonsense that was going on in this dude's head. But if this article isn't enough evidence to prove that Dylan Roof is a racist and that hit the his carrying out that shooting in the church, you know, was racially motivated then I don't know what more evidence you need. I mean, it's so obvious that it's a hate crime that you'd you'd have to be dumb, deaf, blind, and in a de and in delusional denial not to be able to see it anything else as anything else but that. Um, you know, John Stewart even went on his show and didn't even give a like a comedy monologue like most people do during their you know talk shows at the intro. He just pretty much went in on pointing out how America is just in denial and flat out refuses to acknowledge the racial Grand Canyon sized gap that exists in this country. Uh, Chank Uger of the Young Turks, he went in for like a 20 minute tirade and dropped knowledge and history bombs about how the church, how that particular church has been a target of white supremacy attacks for years, it's steeped in history. It's, it's actually a, uh, it, it's one of those historical landmarks that was a benchmark for, you know, the civil rights movement and stuff. And it's been attacked, it's been burnt, people have been shot. There's a military base close by that church that was originally a fuel dump started by, you know, I guess either members of the KKK or just, just racist individuals who wanted to make sure that they had weapons at the hand in case any blacks wanted to continue having church services there and it eventually became a military base like a government run military base which is mind-boggling to me but you know he talks about that in the video i'm gonna have links to those video to, to those two videos in the description too you should definitely check those videos out instead of the news trying to actually like actually be the news and have open dialogues and discussions about racial hate groups and how we can stop the violence and get people more aware, wake people up basically. Instead we have like media outlets like Fox News trying to spin, trying to put a spin on the event and try to say that it's not about race, that it's actually about an attack on religion because the shooting happened in a church. You know, Fox News is, which of their slogan is, Fair and balanced news is putting a spin on a news story. Ironic? Nah, man. Not really. I mean, that's their MO. And I can show you exactly how they do this because they do this all the time. Uh, you know, Fox News will always bring in some kind of commentator 
like say if it's for uh, say there's some kind of lgbt issue and they'll bring in someone from the lgbt community that's basically a conservative and basically agrees with the fox um uh manifesto on on that particular issue and they'll you know they'll basically use that person that they bring in as a mouthpiece to say what fox really wants to say about the situation but they do it so that it doesn't lead back to fox you know they don't get in trouble for it you know because if the if that if their hate message was coming from within the within from fox itself then they'd be in trouble but if it comes from someone within that community then they can get away with it because it technically doesn't reflect the views and opinions of Fox News. It's it's a really sneaky snake kind of uh, way to to get their horrible message across. But in this case, Fox employed a pastor by the name of E. W. Jackson. He's a bishop and a senior past, pastor at uh, the Hope Christian Church. Uh, Fox brings him on purely for the reason to not just reiterate the news anchor's claims that the uh, um, that this was an attack on on religion, but he also makes sure to point out that we shouldn't we shouldn't be so quick to immediately accept this as a racial hate crime because obviously if a black person says it's not racist, then it must not be racist. It's just it's just Fox's new way of of diluting their 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 fan base you know which is it's sad and pathetic but this is what fox news does so you know we have another fox news house nigger and in this context i'm using the n-word as the west webster's dictionary term for nigger meaning a person with low mentality to describe ew jackson because you would have to be a fool to to get in line to get into the fox news party line when you know this is happening to uh you know the church community you know the black church community you know he's he's the very he in my eyes is the very definition of the term uncle tom you know the slang term you know somebody who sells out who sells out their own people you know to either get in the good graces of the white man or you know in this case he sold out his people and almighty god for the almighty dollar you know, I mean, just just think about it for a second. He's a pastor at a church, so he should have a good idea of the deep, long history of, of, of the racially motivated attacks on black churches that have gone on in the South since since before the civil rights movement even began. And and yet here he is on national TV, totally and completely lying. There's no doubt in my mind that that he's lying and he knows he's lying and he's supposed to be a man of God, you know that that fox news segment is just full of ironies when you think about it but in the tyt video jank gives you facts examples details and specifics or as i like to call the feds as to why this attack is racially motivated so and what does fox news give you an indentured servant who gives you his word that the shooting is an attack on religion and not about race so yeah, I mean, it is it is what it is, and it's sad that this is what it is, and this is what we, we, we are getting from our mainstream media outlets as opposed to our alternative media outlets who are actually reporting the news and actually informing you on, on, with knowledge that you actually, that most people don't know. So anyway, I've talked way too long about this, and I haven't even gotten to the comment of the week. You know, this is actually like this, uh, this comment of the week is actually kind of turning into a thrant. So, so here's the comment and this comment pretty much encompasses what I've been feeling for a great long time when it comes to, uh, race relations and, uh, you know, when it comes to just trying to just get along with everybody. Now the guy says basically just posted this in TSB. I'm not sure what site that is but he said you might as well relay it here i gave up being shocked and surprised a long time ago we will never be accepted as equal we will never be loved we just have to make the best with what we've got trying to reason why the world hates us and constantly and continues to discredit us 
will give you more stress than you just don't need. This is how most white Americans feel, whether they want to admit it or not. Deep down, subconsciously, this is the mentality that many white Americans abide by. White flight, gentrification, segregation, etc. These are not mistakes, but plans. Plans that are starting to backfire in white America's face, as not every white American is on board with their racist bullshit. With their manifesto, with this manifesto, race mixing and the decline of white supremacy and population scares most white Americans deeply. They live in fear. Fear that they will lose their land, fear that they will lose their women, fear that they will lose their power. So what do we do to change this? Can we change this? I believe the damage is far too done. These are the consequences of slavery and America's shameful manifesto since inception. Now, I pretty much wholeheartedly agree with what this guy wrote. Uh, the only thing I think if I had written this, the only thing I would have changed is in the part where he says, this is how most white Americans feel. I wouldn't say most because that's too broad a generalization. Like it's kind of like you're encompassing. To me, I feel like it's a lot, not a lot of white Americans feel this way. Not most. Most I think is like too many, you know, um, I think there's, I would like, I would like to believe there's more open-minded white people than our society kind of leads us to believe. Maybe that's just the optimist in me. Um, but you know, that's kind of how I feel. I would, I, I don't, I, I, I am not the kind of person who wants to overgeneralize in anything. So I, I personally just would have said, I feel that a lot of people feel that way. Um, but other than that, man, I totally agree with this. But the part where he asks, you know, if we can change this, I still believe we can. Um, there was a story a long time ago about a guy who he was in the KKK. He was a white supremacist, you know, wholeheartedly card carrying, white sheet wearing racist, you know, and he something happened and his eyes got opened and he basically was able to unlearn all the racist rhetoric and and right and the you know white supremacist ideology that was being fed to him he so he ended up stop he stopped being a racist basically and eventually turned into uh an infor a law enforcement informant against the kkk so he was like in the kkk undercover informing authorities on their goings-ons and whether they were doing anything illegal or whatnot until he got caught and got outed. And then now I think he like goes around talking about how he was once one of them, but now he's seen things and he sees how all that stuff they were saying was, uh, was BS and a lie and everything. So, I mean, if that person can be reached, then I believe we can reach other people. I don't think we should ever stop fighting for, you know, unity for everyone. And I don't think that's entirely what, that guy, that commenter was saying that we should just give up. You know, it, uh, this also reminds me of Bill O'Reilly uh, response to um, Oprah Winfrey getting uh, discriminated against in another country when she went into like this super expensive store to buy some to buy some clothes or something. And the people in the store, they were white because I guess she was in some European country or something. I can't remember exactly the story, but she went into the store and they started kind of, they were being discriminatory towards her basically because they didn't recognize who she was, which is kind of crazy because I think Oprah Winfrey's like worldwide. She's known worldwide. So how these people didn't know who she was boggles my mind. Um, but anyway, they basically said, you know, that she should leave because she's black and she can't afford any of these clothes or any of that, any of those products that were in that store. And... Bill O'Reilly in his response said that when you see people like this, when you run into these individuals, to just leave them be and don't do anything about it. Don't say anything, just move on because you're never gonna change their perception on on how they view on how they view people of other of different of different ethnicities. And to me, that is a statement indicative of somebody who doesn't deal with discrimination on any kind of basis you know whether it be rare or regular because only person who doesn't who only person who when racism isn't a factor to them will say some shit like that you know so i think we need to keep fighting because 
we need to we need to tell we need to let people know that you know you can't let people like Bill O'Reilly tell you what to do about racism. You know, somebody who race baits himself and is going to sit there and tell you he race baits on his show. He's going to sit there and tell you that when somebody is being racist to just not do anything like he, like people like him are the reason why we should be fighting for unity and and going against, you know, all these hate groups, you know, because we can't let them win. And, you know, I'm just going to leave it at that, man. So this was the comment of the week. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I made you know, and I'm out. Peace.